Great relationships don't just happen. They're designed. Why leave love to chance when you can make strategic decisions in your relationship just like you do in your career? The days of settling for mediocre are over. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. Join us as we explore the decisions and choices that make relationships work no matter what life throws your way. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Welcome to Project Relationship. Hey, everybody. So we're going to get to our episode in just a second, but I wanted to make sure that you heard about my latest offering because people have been asking, how can I work with Jolie? And I would love to work with you, but you all have such individual relationships. So I would love to see you pop into my next free live training. It's the best way. Yeah. My it's eyes, right, directly, your relationship. These are small intimate groups. We're just going to meet in Zoom and we're going to talk about what it is that you want and how you can get it. Go to my website, joliehamilton.com. Click on the work with Jolie tab. You'll see some live trainings and masterclasses coming up. Grab a spot at the next one and we'll see you in there. Hi, and welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. We're going to talk this week about something very time pertinent, um, gift giving, which doesn't sound like that big of a deal unless it's a big deal to you. And I, I, mean, I get the impression that it's kind of a big deal for a lot of people. Yeah, I think it is. It I mean, cause... if I hear stories about it causing problems, it has caused problems in my own life. It's caused problems in our relationship. Our relationship yeah. um, I thought we'd take the tactic of looking at gift giving through the the lens of love languages the, the five love languages start. yeah so um gary chapman posited this idea of five love languages um and the, the ones he talks about are words of affirmation acts of service quality time touch and gifts and there's a quiz you can take on um, Chapman's site um five love languages it's it's easy to find and we can link it here to if just to get familiar with like what is your love language how do you feel loved that's the question how do you feel loved what what does it for you um what's your primary love language my primary love language is i think so uh, the primary is tough to to um i know you don't like prioritization very I much i don't um but touch and we, oh touch there you go is um and I will Real say, high. I have always liked um, to divide out. I, th I think that it's it really ideal if we think about touch as separate from sex. Oh, yeah. Um, yes, I Because agree. I think there's a little bit of a, there's a little overgeneralization mm -hmm. and people wind up with touch being the, the primary one. And then it sounds like. It can sound to some partners like, oh, you just want sex. Mm -hmm. But in fact, well, I mean, I'm sitting here with you now recording this podcast and I have no pants on because <laughs> you can do that sort of thing. you can do that kind of thing um, in the modern world. And I have you, I, I put your hand on my leg. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons I did that is because I know that that is a thing that just feels generally um, connecting and pleasurable exactly for you. Exactly how and, it feels, yeah. And it feels fine for me. I don't need it. I don't have quite the same, uh, my jam is acts of service. Right. So it's not so much that I am feeling like, oh, I need to touch you right this second as I'm just aware that this is one of the ways that you feel loved. And so, so I do those things. And at this point, it's like second nature because mm -hmm. I've made sure to incorporate how you want to be loved into my day-to-day -day activities without abandoning myself right. or That's... my needs. Um, so I wouldn't do this if I was feeling all touched out. I wouldn't have yeah. put your hand here. Um, and that happens. Yeah. Or yeah, it's sure. 100 degrees and you're oh, like, okay, stop. Okay, you run very high. It's like, I, I it's like being next to a, a running furnace um, and you're covered with a nice blur of fuzz. So it's insane sometimes. I, I can't quite manage and all the time. Blurry times. and yeah. So, <laughs> so, so yeah, you set your boundaries, and when, on those times, you um, you very graciously are like, no, please, very <laughs> hot. So the experience of honoring each other's love languages 
I, I mean, I like the lens of love languages because it sort of simplifies how we can start talking about yeah. how we want to feel loved. It's the start of a conversation. It, absolutely. I don't is. want to be reductive. Let me tell you for sure. I want all of these things. I love sure. words of affirmation. Yep. I love touch. I, I like quality time and I like exactly, gifts. I, yeah, quality time feels like the, the most fuzzy one in my own head of what and quality yet, time is. I've had friends who that's their like, thing. That's, that's their, their thing, jam. So, I have lots so of I guess that's number that's five for me. Cause yeah, touch and gifts and all, all the other ones are great. Sure. So this is just one way to think about it. Um, I want to draw a little bit of attention before we move on to the specificity of gifts, just to, when we're thinking about love languages, some people make the assumption that they can say, so my love language is, and let's, let's use you as an example, it's touch. touch. And so that's how I love people. Yeah, right. And so you go around touching people and offering touch. Yep. Yeah. That's not the idea. Right. I mean, that's how you get your needs met. But when we're talking about love, we're talking about a the act of of coming to know another person. And so while we want to to ask to have our needs met. Um So it sounds like you're <laughs> suggesting that other people are actually other than me and that <laughs> my o love other. language isn't broadly applicable to everyone else and more importantly just because you feel love through touch some people and i think touch is actually the one that's the easiest to to see this yeah yeah I think so. not everybody wants you to touch them yep that's that's a, a huge a consent thing. violation yep. uh, in many cases but even if it weren't let's take words of affirmation not everybody wants words mm -hmm. of affirmation and to to insist that I love people with words of affirmation. And that is my mode. That's the way I do things. That's not the same thing as seeing and knowing your yeah. lover and, yeah. and, or your partner or your friends or parents or children. Yeah. Right. Right. It, so this is about a way that we can get to know their individuality and then offer them love in a way that feels loving to them. I, this is a great big old ax to grind for me because my father insisted that his way of loving was the way that he was willing to love. End of story. So no, no compromise, no acknowledgement of what you wanted, what, 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 even when I was explicit about what I needed, which was from him, I wanted, um, words of affirmation and acts of service. Um, even when I was very, very explicit about that. Nope, absolutely not. Um, he offered, he wanted quality time. Right. And that was that. That was that. There was no, there's nothing else. And the quality time he wanted had nothing to do with providing me with words of affirmation. Like those two could have overlapped, yeah. but they didn't for him. And I mean, this is going way back, way before I knew anything about this idea. I have dozens of memories of him as a child just just sort of flogging us with his way of loving us that did not feel like love mm. and it was so one-sided that I, I started thinking that that was normal and then I accepted it from my first husband and I accepted it from my friends and I said I I abandoned what I actually desired and that left me feeling 100% misunderstood. I did not think anyone in my life understood who I was. All the way up through my 20s and 30s, I, I felt completely invisible. And so, that's... so I, I feel like there's, there's something really powerful here yeah. about, about coming to understand that while we may really enjoy offering love in particular ways, that needs to take a back seat to how our people want to feel loved. We have been talking about love as a verb for yeah. years and years. In yeah, a long, long time. And um, this feels very much like one of those things, one of those places where what, what we choose to do, what I choose to do in regards to you 
is a way of expressing my love for you, yeah. what I do. And um, ideally, I know you well enough so that I know which things to do will feel like love to you. And, and sometimes if, you're going to get it wrong. Yeah, sure, sure. And that's where, I mean, there's a conversation to be had, right. obviously, but... Because, I mean, you're, you're uh, you know, in any given relationship, you're going to get it wrong at the beginning because you don't know yet. Right. And then so you're going you to pr build a habit of talking about it. You can also get it wrong at any point. And at any point, because as we know, people change. Yeah. So that brings us to gifts. I find that gifts is one of the most interesting um, parts of the five. Um, I know a few people who giving gifts is one of their love languages. And in fact, I love giving gifts. <laughs> I do too. Just not good at it. But there, there's a rub. We'll get to that. We, okay. We'll get to All it. All right. We'll leave that but, one aside for the moment. Yeah. Hang on. Cause I just want to say the wanting to give gifts isn't the same as wanting to receive gifts. Right. As yep. I, I, I am chal I am gift receiving challenged deeply. Um, but I've been surrounded by a lot of people who love giving gifts. Um, and it's a, it's a tough one. And we, so we live in a culture that has not only prioritized materialism, but also we have these big gift giving seasons. Yeah. And so here we are at the start of one <laughs> for many of us, we're up against Christmas and Hanukkah kwanzaa um we're up against some seasonal times when the giving of gifts is normal and yet this can be really challenging for a lot of people for a lot of reasons what do we do with the reality that there is this gift centric season on top of the fact that we may be challenged in in gifting on top of the fact that we may want to move away from materialism just for, for other reasons, there might be reasons we, where we want to, you know, divest from being so materialistic all the time. And, and I'm not saying the gifts are bad because they're material, because I love stuff. But there are lots of reasons why but we might want to move of, away from it. And yep. yet here we are presented with this, this season. I thought we should have this episode because I thought it was good to do an episode on gifts before we all go making our plans yeah so that so what is do you, what's, so my what do you first think? yeah so the first thing that comes to mind is thoughtful timing really matters when it comes to gifts because if we're going to change our gift giving habits our gift giving norms so you have a we all have some norms right so we blend the family together or a couple together or friends together and they're going to be these different norms and now we have to come to shared norms shared meaning behind like what are we doing about gifts so first off that's a conversation yes here we go <laughs> earlier we said that so you love to give gifts but um you haven't loved to converse about giving gifts yeah and so uh it hasn't gone really well because I'm, I'm really picky yep and, and i used to feel bad about being picky but I'm just really particular and I, and I don't, I don't mind not receiving any gifts. That's fine. I don't want to have stuff that I don't want. And I don't think I have ever awareness. acted like I believe that. Yeah. And therefore I've gotten you all many, <laughs> what I would do is get a box, fill it up with stress, wrap it up in paper and then <laughs> give it to you because it's, you you gave me what I needed to know that this wasn't going to work. But what with one thing and another and complex and, and a culture system that says and, it's and, time and, to give a gift yeah. now. Here we are. We're in this season. Got to give a gift. And I have an I idea about what I could do instead. Cool. Do that. What do you got? There's those five love lines. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That we've been. And what's my favorite one? About. Gifts, acts of service. Yeah. So, what's so, the best gift for me? Uh, an act of service or a collection of them, or what? Yeah. So, every one of I these. I really do like those coupons. Make me a book of coupons any right. old day. Yep. I'll take it. <laughs> every one of those can be gifts. Can be a gift. Absolutely. Words of affirmation. Oh my gosh. 
I once received a poem. It was a, it was just this beautifully affirmative poem. I, it was like, I, I felt really, really seen when I got that. That was really, yeah. whew, that's so, like one of the top 10 things I've ever received in my life. So um, gifts on this list, I, I actually haven't looked at Gary Chapman's work in quite a while now, but gifts in this culture tends to mean stuff in a box or whatever, you know, stuff. Yeah. But there are an infinite variety of types of gifts to give. Sure. Um, and a blowjob you, never goes out of style for, for many example, people. For many people, that's just like. Giving right? and receiving is, you know, depends yeah. on what you're into. Um, yeah. So that that's my thought around that. Okay. Well, so that took 12 years, everyone. <laughs> and because the thing is, you have heard that from me. Before, oh, yes, absolutely. But you haven't, and I've had the here's thought. The, here's the thing. This time you thought it for yourself and you recorded it. So cool. Live problem solving. There you go. If, um, if he doesn't manage that this year, uh, we'll do an, a follow-up episode in January. With Jan someone else. <laughs> 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 oh. No, that's not how things go. No, here. no, no. I probably will find someone else, but just next to, not in place of. Right. Anyways, when we want to reimagine gift giving, I find it really helpful to remember that reimagining gift giving and gift receiving yeah. is uh, is awesome because gift giving can be so stressful. It can be stressful from the giving side. It can be stressful from the receiving side. And here's the thing. The receiving isn't actually the worst of it for me. I have a really time with gift opening. Right. Like a, I have a yeah. massive gift opening complex. Like it is so intense. And every year you have several opportunities to sit in it. I, I've gotten better at being able to receive gifts from you, from my kids, um, even from a few close friends, sort of. But it is really challenging for me mm -hmm. to be in a situation where I have to open gifts. I, I, I believe I had, I had actual heart palpitations and threw up um, at my baby shower because I needed to like sit in front of a room full of people that does and open presents and ooh like on. torture I, for you. It was horrifying. I didn't know what to do. It was just so, it was so, it was so overwhelming that I was scared of it for two months beforehand. I didn't even want to have a baby shower because I was so scared. Um, I can posit some guesses based on my childhood. And even just talking about it, I have all tears in I my see eyes. It. Yeah, I can hear it. Um, I can posit some guesses as to why this is. And my mom loved giving gifts. And she even did a really great job. But this has clearly caused me stress my whole life because when I was little, I became an, an expert at locating the gifts all over the house, like beforehand. I became so good at I could slit the tape on any gift that, so she would wrap the gifts ahead of time so that I, I couldn't like, cause I'd I would find them mm -hmm. ahead of time. Um, I, I became really capable of slitting the, the, the gift wrap exactly with an, uh, an exacto knife and then retaping it perfectly. So it was all lined up. And I so think this... I was doing a lot of, um, disappointment management mm -hmm. cause I didn't, it wasn't about, Ooh, am I going to get this thing? It was, it, there was something else going on. So that sounds like an, uh, a good place to do some reimagining of gift giving norms right but not you know in mid-december you were talking about timing earlier. there's the thing the timing matters if we if we ask for a change when gift giving is is like right in front of us um well there's probably going to be asymmetry present because other people will have had their own expectations so this is one of those things that yeah have a conversation about it ahead of time and it's, it is one of those crucial conversations. You're going to want to set up for success, ask for the support you need to reimagine something and maybe don't try to change the whole system all at once. I, oh. I actually, I think you could go two ways with this and I have gone two ways with this. Either start with something that's going to be meaningful, but small, a meaningful, but, but small change, like a, a change that we made. We have seven kids and when they were little, they wanted to like buy each other presents and that was cool, but it, it adds up really fast. Yeah. Like before you know it, you have to go buy five, 49 things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really, yeah. It's wild. Yep. And so, um, well that got out of hand really quick. So we, we pretty fast switched to secret Santa for, for all yep. of us there. Okay. Secret Santa present and we draw the name and do the thing. And 
that simple change alleviated a lot of stress around, oh, who am I going to, and I have to, and all these things and the, the, the money or the making or whatever it and was. And as parents, the navigating of every kid coming to us and saying, oh so what gosh. does this other kid want? And what does this other other kid want? And what about that one? And Wait, and as parents or lot. as me? Well, nobody asked me because, well, I made myself unavailable, but yes, as you. This was a tender area. So yeah. we did two years with it, a disaster. Yeah. And then. And then you fixed it because you're we like, made oh, a change, oh. but we didn't change every nope. gift giving norm right. all at once. We simply made, changed that one thing. And then over the years, we've changed some other right. things about gift giving. So you're um, saying one approach the, is to find the meaningful thing. But like here's the thing. The, the kids must have noticed that change was possible because spontaneously last year they had a conversation oh, torrin started it right and they decided not to give each other birthday gifts after years of each of them buying they would buy birthday gifts for each other and and one year um was it which one of them made it rain with just like all dollar bills on the other one i don't remember which one it was was it Quinn? No, it might have been Torin doing might have, that. No, too, oh, Quinn. it was Torin too, Quinn. Right. <laughs> um, so they've been doing gifts for years, and then we were sitting in the kitchen one day, and they had a let's have a chat about birth about birthday gifts. Yeah. And they collectively decided that it was foolish for them to all be putting in all of this stress. I say collectively and money. Mac was a little bummed. The youngest yeah. of them yep. was like, "Hey, but." Because he loves giving gifts. Oh, he does so much. And he's a, he's a money saver, so he's always got the cash, no problem. And he likes he likes spending it on the other yeah. people. So he's gonna be a, one of those people who likes to give gifts. So he felt a little bummed, um, but but he did go with the collective decision of like, yeah, this is hard, but 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 overall, it seems to be the thing that will leave the most people satisfied and happy and and feeling mm. good and and. It was just so interesting to watch them decide together yes. to change the norms yeah. of their family. Not us Not decide us. to change nope. the norms of our family, but them yeah. as a group. Like, okay, we're siblings. Let's do this different. Yeah. I'm going to props to us for creating a culture where they felt like they could do that. Yeah. And to them for, wow, yeah. love these guys. Yeah. It's awesome. For sure. Um, but that said, I have taken a different tactic in previous years. One of the ways that I addressed a gift giving issue was to go for the really the full minimalism experience. Yep. And this really only works if um, if you can get everybody on board. Otherwise, it feels there's a lot of asymmetry that enters with, yeah, the room and it's really tough. Asymmetry. But um, I read a book called The Hundred Dollar Christmas and I picked, I think, the sum of like three hundred or four hundred dollars, and I limited everything—food expenditure and and gifts and all that—to a very a, a very very reasonable amount. And then it became about um, doing stuff together. And I did that. It was the kids were all under the age of ten when that when I was doing that. And I'm a maker, so this didn't mean that there weren't a whole bunch of presents because I'm a maker and I have so many supplies around. So there were all th sorts of things that I made for them. I needle felted things for them. And I knitted and I crocheted and we woodworked and there was all sorts of stuff. It was very Victorian. It was all very Victorian. <laughs> I mean, that was my jam. That's all I did was make stuff back yeah. then. I mean, I have a toy company for God's sakes. Mm. Um, but when, when I did that, it actually was e because everybody was young, the kids, they, they just, they accepted that I was setting the cultural norm. I was holding the container of this yeah. and it worked okay. Um, but as they got older, yeah, we co-create this reality yep. with us and with them. Yeah. And so I think now we're at that spot where, yeah, it's, it's easier to choose a, a one or two facets where we want to see change. And one of the things that you and I changed um, is that we, we downsized our gift giving to each other. Cause I just don't really, um, enjoy. But then I realized, no, I love giving you gifts and you like receiving gifts. I do. So we do the asymmetric thing. Yeah. We just accept the asymmetry. It's fine. Mm -hmm. But boy, that took a long time to get there that it is, it's asymmetric because, because it just is, because that's actually what feels good. 
Yeah. I can say the same thing about oral sex. One of us likes it a little bit more than the other, the the receiving of it. Yep. So it's asymmetric. Yeah. Who cares? Right. As long as we're both on the same page. It's about the overall experience of it. Yeah. So So what experience do you want to have? And that's what that hundred dollar Christmas is about, right? Yeah. It's about about making the experience now. And it's not even about a particular number. It's just yeah. So and and I do something different. There's there is something I love for a holiday or for my birthday. There's only one thing I want every single time, and that's books. Mm -hmm. But I'm perfectly happy to get them for myself. When my kids were little, I would just because my my first husband was not a gift giver, so um, I just bought the books and I wrapped them and I opened them on Christmas morning, and it was fine. It was that that was. If it had been me, I probably would have bought you like a train set. Yeah, I would have loved that. (laughs) Great. Here's a Rubik's cube. Let's not, can we? So, so uh, anyways, so making make, the experience and the the setting the feeling tone for that's what it. The, for your time, whatever it is, your your holiday, your vacation, your setting the feeling tone is the key. Yeah, creating shared meaning around how yeah. we want yeah the holiday or the birthday or the gift giving occasion to yeah. feel. For instance. Um, if I were, I, I'm, I'm totally done having babies, but if I were to have a baby, I would have one of those, those non gift giving events. Like, let's mm-hmm. celebrate like a, like a blessing way. Mm-hmm. Let's celebrate this person, but I would not do gifts. I just wouldn't. That's for me. Other people love the gifts and go for it. Gift giving may be really, really important <laughs> to We'd some people. We have a little people. spot by the door for people who absolutely insisted on being bringing presents that they could put it in. It would be round and blue and have a tight fitting lid oh, with a little recycle for me. <laughs> oh, recycle symbol on the outside. So it's not true. There are gifts I like. It's just there that are. I feel really tender about yeah. it. Yeah. But um, so. On the on the flip side of this, gift giving may feel incredibly important to some people. So this is where creativity becomes really important. Mm-hmm. Um, how can we creatively learn to accept gifts? And one of the ways is by learning to accept gifts and not forcing us to keep them. Not forcing ourselves to keep them. Just oh, because yeah. something okay. is given to us doesn't mean that it has to stay in our lives forever. I'm a big fan of the idea that that some things are, they're gifts to us. Um, and the gift was in the exchange. And that doesn't mean it has to stay forever. So creating a, a cultural norm for ourselves and our in our families where it's okay to say no thank you but it's also okay to accept something and then find its right place in the world mm. oh yeah that's a that's a thing and i think that uh, so what you've been saying is is kind of predicated on us all talking about what we want out of all of this you you mentioned the kids and not they shaming. were sitting around and they talked about what right. they were gonna do and not shaming, not shaming each other shaming. right so there's nothing wrong with loving receiving gifts in that is like so i know somebody who loves to receive gifts and what they love about it is that they know that the person took the time to know them well enough to mm. choose something to select it to go out of their way and then and then and then present it to them it matters a ton to them they love that I would, so, wow, I love getting her presents. Yay. But um, it's, it would be equally okay if she didn't. There's nothing wrong with liking giving gifts or not giving gifts. So we can remove the shame piece of it by just saying, well, we're all going to be different. That's normal. What can we agree to do with it? And this is one of the places where I think asymmetry can be a healthy option. But the but discussing it so that the asymmetry is made explicit and conscious yeah. changes everything. Yeah. Um, and it's been a game changer for us when I realized that we could have an asymmetric experience and then both of us would be happy. Yeah. So yeah, what so something was asymmetric, but something wasn't. So it looks asymmetric from one point of view, but we both ended up equally happy. 
So our feeling it wasn't asymmetric. That feeling tone you were talking about yeah. is not asymmetric. In mm -hmm. fact, it's lovely. Now here we are entering this season. I hope that whatever holidays you do celebrate are glorious for you and you focus on finding pleasure at every turn, at every chance you can. Um, yeah, experiment with gift giving from a place of, well, let's follow the pleasure. Follow the pleasure. Awesome. Love that. Okay. Well. Keep talking to each other. Hey, everybody. So we've talked quite a bit about how to do relationships, but I know a lot of you would really like to get my eyes on your relationships specifically. It's so worth it. And yeah, that's a bit of a hard thing for me to do for everyone individually, unless you're actually working in my coaching program. But good news, I'm doing some free live trainings. Yay! Yay. Live that's, trainings. that's awesome. I mean, I get it all the time. I'm with you all the time. It's true. I get true. lots of training and and You were just in one so... big free live training. And Oh, wait, I'm... you pay for it. Okay, maybe I pay for a little, but you don't have to. <laughs> okay, so I would love to to have y'all click on over to my website, joliehamilton.com. And if you click on the tab that says work with Jolie, you're going to see my latest offering for a live training. These are 60-minute master classes in how we can relate better. I'm going to be covering topics like creative monogamy, like how to transition into consensual non-monogamy, if that's your thing. And I'm also going to be talking about something that is really in my wheelhouse and something that we don't talk about on this show as often as we might, which is how to have a completely kick-ass relationship that really empowers you to be your full CEO mm -hmm. power player self. Right. So in my other world, I do a lot of business coaching. So bring it on. Bring it on. And you've all here heard us talking about our relationship and you have heard how she has addressed all of our issues in our relationship and how we talk about it. And she will turn that attention on you. And it is amazing what you can learn. Well, thanks. And yeah, just jump on over. Love to see you in there. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Project Relationship Podcast with Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And Ken Hamilton. If you're enjoying our conversation, we would be so grateful if you would drop a rating and quick review so more people will be able to find us. And if you have questions or suggestions that you of things you'd like us to tackle, please send an email to jolie at joliehamilton.com. I'd love to hear them. Project Relationship, the Entrepreneur's Action Plan for Passionate, Sustainable Love is available on Amazon in Kindle, soft, or hardcover versions. This book is a succinct, practical guide to improving your love life. I wrote Project Relationship to give you a set of quick action tools and conversation guides that can transform a mediocre relationship into a fabulous one. These tools are based not just on what Jolie learned in her studies, but on what we actually do to make our relationship thrive. Until next time, remember, relationships can be messy, and that's good news. <laughs>